Steve, the shorthand for this movie uh, might be a woman's 50 year, 50 year long search for her son. But the, the other aspect to it, which, which I really love, is you've got these two characters from two different planets, basically, mm -hmm. travelling around together. I suspect that must have drawn you into that story, given that the other story is already out there, in a sense. Uh, well, I mean, the, the story that existed was about... The, the, I mean, I, I optioned a book uh, that was uh, written by Martin Sixsmith, but really, um, I wanted to tell a slightly different story, which was uh, uh, putting Martin himself into the story. So really, the, the, the kind of the odd couple journey of, of Martin and Philomena, with, with, with me and Judy, um, is... Uh, it's a construct, really. Um, because, of course, the, you know, we see both their sort of world views um, uh, sort of d differing and, and we see the sort of differences in their characters. You know, we see it, it, it's, uh, it's an odd couple road movie, really, and it's about the journey rather than the destination. And it's, 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 it's about really, uh, it's about intellect versus in intuition and, uh, and it's about faith versus you know, uh, atheism. And it's, uh, it's about class too, and, and there, cynicism as, as well. Yeah. There are those massive differences between them, and I want to come back to some of them, but one of the things that does link them is that they're both Catholic. Now, the, the mm. Sixsmith figure is long lapsed. She is a, an Irish Catholic woman mm -hmm. in England of long standing. That sets up comedy, yes, but it also sets up a really interesting way of, di of discussing what religion and faith actually is. Yeah, well, that, 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 that was a sort of deliberate... Uh, I mean, in fact, there's a lot of artistic license. Martin, in actual fact, isn't a Catholic at all. Um, I, I, uh, I invented that uh, because I'm a Catholic, and, of course, I wrote it, so I put a lot of myself into it, and I wanted to have that discussion on screen, but it's a, a, a discussion I have in my head quite a lot. Um, but, I, I mean, so I would say I was a Catholic. I'm a lapsed Catholic. I'm, I'm, uh, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist, not an agnostic. I think agnosticism is for cowards. Um, so no, um, but, but you uh, must have known growing up. We're exactly the same age, sixty-five, I think. Mm -hmm. You must have known. We're born in sixty-five. Actually, yes, 48. exactly. <laughs> We're not sixty-five <laughs> yes. yet. I'm forty-eight as well. <laughs> um, you must have known, as I did, lots of women exactly like Philomena. Yes, of course. Exactly yeah. like her. Yeah. In a sense, to what degree was this film a kind of a tribute to those kind of women who were often overlooked and underestimated? Uh, it, well, it was because it's very easy to uh, mock. Um, slightly eccentric older Irish women, of which there are many. Um, but uh, I wanted to have fun with her character and, um, and, and do that thing where you gently mock uh, and, 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 and appear to laugh at, but then surprise the audience by realising that there's more to her than initially meets the eye. Uh, and that was important too, uh, because the expectation is... I wanted to play with the expectations that you have this Oxbridge educa educated intellectual who actually learns an awful lot more from the um, uh, uh, working class, um, not non-formally educated old Irish woman. She, she, te she teaches him uh, as much, if not more, than, than he teaches her. There's, there's a lovely moment in it where he swears for the first time and he apologises immediately, polite man that he is. But her response is, I've been a nurse for 30 years, I've heard a lot worse. Mm -hmm. You suddenly do get the sense that, hang on a minute, she's not what we assume her to be at all. Uh, that, that's right, you know, and, and don't judge a book by its cover. And, um, and, and uh, for all the uh, finger-wagging that, that uh, might be deemed to be uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, pointed at the Catholic Church, um, it, it was important to me that, that whatever uh, criticisms there were of, of the church as an institution, that sort of that people of simple faith like Philomena, were dignified and not thrown in with, with, with that and were not um, castigated uh, in, in that way. That, so so that, that, that was important, I think, when I was writing. You're very respectful of that. And you said earlier on these things are often on your mind. There are a lot, I think, of, of, of Irish Catholics of our age who have seen a lot of things and discovered a lot of things that have happened, but have not yet, to use Heaney's expression, had it out with themselves mm. completely. <laughs> are you in that boat? Uh, yes, I think I sort of did ha have it out with myself um, to some extent, but in fact, um, I think my my um, my views have been tempered by the experience of writing this screenplay with Jeff Pope. I hasten to add, I couldn't have done it without him. Um, uh, yeah, they've, they've been tempered because you you learn to. I was raised a Catholic, and you know there are lots of people in my life uh, 
who are practicing Catholics. And uh, I think well, you know, whatever your opinion or whatever conclusions you arrive at, you have to have the humility to, to know that, uh, that uh, no one has a monopoly on wisdom and that uh, you know, uh, there's always room for self-doubt, even, even amongst uh, atheists. <laughs> Martin, Martin, they've got omelettes okay. over there, Thank you. pancakes, and waffles, any filling, and cereal, no, bacon, and sausage, anything you I want. Saw, I saw. Breakfast is included, isn't it? It is. It's just that I'm, it's too early for me. My stomach hasn't woken up yet. Well, mine wakes up before I do. I'm having a ham and Swiss cheese omelet. Will I get you one? I No, I, I just, I'm not hungry. What about some blueberries? I Coffee? Agree. No, thank you. OK, well, if you want to help yourself to breakfast over there, we have two buffets, hot and cold, fresh fruit, cereal. She just told me. Um, <laughs> Omelets with your choice of filling. I know exactly what's on display over there. We also have fresh pancakes. Thank you. Trying to have a private conversation. My apologies, sir. It's need to be rude. She's a very nice person. I know. I'm sure she's one in a million, or one in a hundred thousand. What do you mean? Well, you said it to about ten people, so that's just maths. You should be nice to the people on the way up, because you might meet them again on the way down. Now, you of all people should understand that. I'd rather you were rude to me than the nice people who work here. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to help you find your son. That's why we're here. So, um... Let's have, have some quiet time. As you said earlier, it is a road movie, actually. And I didn't realise that till you pointed it out, and it's obvious it is a road movie. But it's a road movie where these two people go off on a very, very serious mission, very serious job. And the Sixsmith character is working. He's a journalist. You've taken a very public stand on a certain type of journalism over the years. So you must have been interested in exploring a journalist, because there are ethical issues at work and at play in what he's doing. Yes, I suppose there are. But, um, but those things didn't really occur to me until, I was d until well into the writing process. Um, uh, it, it wasn't. It, it, re it wasn't on my. And certain people like yourself have, have pointed that it out since the film's been made that, that I'm playing as journalist, and, and, and I did. And it's important to emphasise that uh, my that uh, people uh, you, you framed it correctly. But some people have said to me that uh, um, why are you playing a nice journalist if you a journalist if you don't like journalists, which is the sort of simplistic reductive position taken by sort of which is a very tabloid journalist kind of question to ask um but of course you know um i i i i love some journalists i i like the good journalists i just don't like the bad ones <laughs> it's that simple um and um but he's engaged but, but he, in a human he, interest he, he, story he, he, he is engaged in a human interest story and he does have a sort of a uh, there's a moral dilemma for him i mean the way, but it, it really he could have been in any job it was i mean the, the story that attracted me was the notion of faith and cynicism and those themes and, and, and whether intellect makes you any more, have you, um, give you any more insight into humanity than not having an intellect. All those things were more interesting to me than the, the role of him as a journalist. That to me was really academic. And, and the, the, the important thing about uh, uh, Martin's character was, was this notion of um, cynicism. I think, I think you could say that yes, there are a lot of cynical journalists um, whose position during, during my involvement in, in um, at the Leveson inquiry, uh, a lot of people, you know, like Kelvin McKenzie, who are cynics, think, "Well, everyone does this. We're all at it. So, what's the problem?" Um, which is a very cynical, defeatist attitude. Um, because situations arrive in this where, where Philomena suddenly decides, "I don't want to tell the story at all. I don't want my name. I want to use somebody else's name." Meanwhile, he's got an editor on the phone saying, "Give me more evil nuns." Yeah. You know. Yeah. So you can see that he is, as a working journalist in a position where he has to make moral choices. Yes, um, and I think, but I think the way I sort of portray Martin is, is, is as someone who, at heart, um, is not a cynic. Um, but he's tempted, in, but he feels that, in the same way that many people do, is, well, everyone else is being cynical and, and in it for themselves, so I might as well be. And I think there are a lot of people who, I think it, the film resonates with a lot of people for many reasons, but not least one of them is that, um, I think that being cynical is a sort of a defensive uh, position, um, and you know I think most people at heart would like to be sincere, but they're scared of it. There's a lot of comedy in the film, Steve, but but there's also obviously enormous tragedy, and in fact at the start it, it's it's harrowing, and the, the flashbacks are are harrowing, not just because of the movie, but because we know in real life that this is true. You know we know this happened, and people watching the film will be 
uh, upset and will get angry. Given that, given the real life backdrop to that, was it hard for you to control the film? Either, you know, it might get too emotional, too out of control, or was it, how, how am I going to get a joke in here? Uh, well, I knew I'd be able to find humour. Um, and the, really, the thing, the, the, the problem was not finding humour, because once you set up the characters correctly, you can see how humour can naturally be generated. The problem was um, actually knowing when to back off the humour and let the sort of emotion play and let the pathos play. Um, but also, um, with regard to the, uh, the, the nuns, I mean, I didn't want to, uh, uh, them to, to be portrayed in a, in, a, in a caricatured way, and I'm pleased to say I don't think that happened. Um, because even though um, some of the things they did and said m might appear to be over the top to a modern audience, or audiences that aren't in the know, in actual fact, I mean, if, if we'd been truthful, they would have behaved even worse. <laughs> um, but you have to sort of portray them in a way that, that, that is credible. Um, and also, I mean, I think, you know, we, we've seen an awful lot of sort of badly behaved nuns on screen. And I, I, I didn't want to get too bogged down in that because it's, it's very, and also not to, to entirely um, be preoccupied with the notion of the way the church behaved in the 1950s because, of course, you know, in our slightly more modern, slightly more enlightened times, it's very easy to look back in, in retrospect and wag your finger. And I, and I didn't really want to do that either. The um, other thing maybe a, a, a modern audience, a younger audience, might have trouble understanding is Philomena's own reaction. She doesn't want to attack the church. She doesn't even want to attack the nuns who did this to her. People would find that extraordinary, but I think people of our age will know that's the way it was. Well, yes, in fact, and, and also it's, uh, it's, it's not, uh, I, you know, I mean, some, there's no right or wrong way to react to that. People react to it in different ways. But um, in actual fact, what I wanted to do was dignify her faith. And I think, you know, uh, without me, you know, I, 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 don't think, I think it's wrong to be prescriptive. I, I, I wouldn't say, you know, if something awful happens to you, you should forgive the people who perpetrate the act on you. That's up to the individual. But um, what I would say is that um, uh, preoccupation with revenge and the, the, the cycle of violence and misery that being hell-bent on revenge uh, 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 brings is, is, is never constructive. You know, nothing good ever comes of revenge, perhaps for a, a moment's respite. Um, so I think that um, you know her reaction is quite uh, is quite a sort of profound one to, to what's happened to her, and um, and you know she seems the, the the person at the end of at the end of the the, the story that's that's more uh, at peace with herself um, is Philomena rather than Martin, and um, Martin's the one who doesn't have the faith. So. And they do kind of uh, equalise, in some, if that's a word, they, they kind of start to level out in terms of their knowledge. Or, and at the end of it, really, he doesn't know any more about anything no. than she does. No, that, that, that's true. And I wanted to make, make that the case. And I didn't want either of them to undergo any kind of Damascene conversion. Um, they both stay true to who they are at the end, but they both learn from each other. And I suppose that's, that's, that's all I wanted to do. Really. And while we see S Sixsmith's uh, reaction at the end of the film, what, what about you and... Because your own, your own belief and faith or, or lack of it and your background must have been going through, in your mind throughout this film. Uh, it was. It was, an, it was an opportunity. I mean, when I came across the story, I felt like I, I, did, I, I, felt like I wanted to get involved in telling this story. If, when I first read it in the newspaper, I found it very moving. But what I, I, I thought was that, that um, it, I was able to explore it because I felt I had some license to being raised a Catholic and also being familiar with Ireland as a place I spent every, most, most of my summer summers growing up, um, and being and my ancestry being Irish and, and feeling half Irish gr growing up. So I, I felt like I, I, I wasn't, uh, you know, I felt like I had some license. I felt, felt, like, I felt familiar with, with, with the material. Yeah. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. There are avenues we can pursue in America. I'm getting the royal treatment, Martin. I feel like the Pope. Champagne or box first? Oh, no, thank you. It's free. Oh, I, I see. You have to pay for everything on Ryanair.